Okay, today we're going to review how to get data into R, how to calculate some descriptive statistics, and how to save our script. So I'm going to go ahead and open up an R script window and try to import a data set using the code that we went over in the last video about importing data. So same thing, naming the data set bfast using the read.csv function, typing in the name, making sure to tell R that there are indeed header names, and also the separator value. Uh-oh, though, we're getting an error. It's because I committed the cardinal sin of RStudio not choosing my working directory. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You'll see that this R underscore examples actually has the serials.csv file. Now everything is fine. In BFAST, I have now our, I'm sorry, in the global environment, we have our BFAST data set. Clicking on it to take a quick look, everything looks fine. We're going to be looking at calories and fat today because these are our numeric data. First and foremost, we want to see what R thinks of the data in our data set. So by typing in class and then in parentheses the name of the data set, and then um, a dollar sign and then the column name, we can see that the calories column in the data set BFAST is called an integer, it's a number. We can also use essentially the same code and type in the mean of calories. Same thing for the standard deviation. You're always typing in the name of the data set in your global environment the dollar sign, and then the name of the column or the header that you wish to calculate the descriptive statistics for. You can also do median. It gets pretty repetitive. <laughs> you can also calculate the quantiles or the quartiles. So um, thinking back to box plots, for example, when you're looking at the spread of your data and you're wanting to figure out essentially what is the zero, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%, Quantile will give you those numbers. What about the IQR? This is the 75% minus the 25% um, to get essentially the dimensions of your box in a box plot. You can do that as well. So now you're going to see up here, our script is called Untitled and it's in red. That isn't great. We want to write ourselves some notes and then also save our script. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, again, using the hashtag or the pound symbol, and just give myself a little bit of a heads up of what I use this code for. You can write as much as or as little as you want, just make sure that you have that hashtag or that pound symbol um, before you write yourself some notes. Essentially what that's going to mean to R is to skip over that information and run the line of code without the hashtag or the um, pound sign. So I'm just going to continue with that for each one of these descriptive statistics measures. All right, and that's the end here. You can even go a step farther, and sometimes when I'm learning a new function, for example, I write myself essentially the syntax, what the syntax means of that code. So for example, if I'm going to use the class function inside the parentheses, I'm going to need to write the name of your date of my data set as R interprets it, and then the dollar sign, and then the name of the column you wish to calculate the descriptive statistics for. Um, that, to me, is just a nice way of remembering exactly what all these lines of codes do, because I've, as I've mentioned in class before, I tend to copy and paste. Then if you go up to File and Save As, you can save your data set. I'm sorry, not your data set, your R script to your working directory. And you're going to see now that the script is called Descriptive Stats.R, and that means that it is an R readable data set. Now I'm going to close up shop here, not save anything, so that when I go to open up RStudio again, 
you can see that I can easily retrieve that code that I had saved before. So of course, setting my working directory first, because that's where that R code is saved. Yep, there it is. So click open. That's gonna open the descriptive, or I'm sorry, the working directory file. Then if we go up to file, open file, I will be able to click on that descriptive stats.r file and all of my code shows up. And then essentially I can set my cursor onto the lines, active lines of code in black, hit run, and just march through my data set again. One thing to mention here is that let's say instead of calories, you want to calculate the standard deviation for fat. In the console down at the bottom, you can use the up arrow on the right hand side of your keyboard to copy down the previous line of code and you can keep pressing that up button to go back through the active lines of code just give it a shot you'll see what I mean sometimes when I'm just wanting to calculate a bunch of descriptive statistics for example um, I just go in and edit the information in the active console the other thing that I can do is, again, if I want to import another data set, rather than just copying this down from my head, I copy, I paste, and then I alter the code in my, my script. So let's say we want to import a data set that is saved in the working directory called horses.csv, call it data one. We went ahead and we did that. So now you can see descriptive stats. We are back to red. That means it's not saved. Before you close this out, you're gonna to want to save this. Go up to file and hit save. Now we're back to black and we're good to go. So this is a great way to make sure you understand what your code means. Write yourself some notes. I really highly encourage you to annotate your code, especially while you're learning so that you don't have to remember things. <laughs> um, it makes life a lot easier and that's what the real programmers do. So I think we should learn from them.